Tonight's extravaganza of openings begins with Brasserie La Chope's Night Owl uh, La Chope Stout. They don't have any tasting notes on the can, so I'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way. Medium sort of roast malt, um, a little bit more hops than I was expecting out of a stout. Generally, not a bad beer, and I'm going to enjoy drinking that. While I open all of these packages, including a couple that a sponsor sent me. A while ago, I asked you guys, and you said, yeah, why not? If somebody's going to send you free stuff to review, might as well go for it. So that's what those will be. But we'll start with this one first. Which calls itself tubing. Okay. Well packed. Aha! This is some uh, PTFE tubing, uh, aka Teflon, uh, aka Bowden tube from a printer. You may recall a while ago I bought some that uh, just cheap knockoff stuff that was the wrong size. So now I have got this little set. So this is the actual tubing, which I have a piece of filament around here. Fits nice in there. And it's actually, it's, it has a little bit of slop in it, but not too much. It's a little bit tighter than the stock tube, which I think is good. And this one came with fittings for both ends. So I don't have to worry about not matching the, uh, the physical size of the existing ones. These are technically these pneumatic connections, but that, ju that should just press in there. Yeah, and then it won't pull back out unless you push that down and then it will. And it kind of grips into the tubing. Okay, there's two different threads, one that goes into the hot end and one that goes into the extruder. The other thing that came with it is this nifty little cutter, which makes a nice square cut on the end of the tubing like that nice and square in 90 degrees doesn't crush the tubing and apparently you want that so that you get a well I mean it's always good to make a nice uh, nice square cut but you want it so that it seats down into the bottom nicely so that there's no gaps or anything that'll be a good upgrade I guess or for when I uh, when I damage the tubing that I've got. This stuff apparently, unless it's a cheap knockoff, which it might be, um, but apparently it's a little bit higher temperature uh, rated than the stock uh, kind of whitish stuff that normally comes on printers. Capricorn PTFE Bowden Tubing XS Series 2 meters and tube cutter for 3D printer, 1.75 NJ, whatever those mean. Got this from Sunny Store 6. For some reason, they've got them priced in uh, in British pounds, but uh, their stores in Shenzhen, whatever. Um, currently going for four ninety nine in uh, the UK or eight sixty in Canadian dollars. Uh, back when I bought it, I paid eight fifty one, so the currency has shifted a little bit. Um, but I did pay you know eighty nine pence of uh, shipping or dollar fifty three Canadian, so that's pretty much inevitable these days. You're going to pay shipping whether you like it or not. It claims to be Capricorn. I can't guarantee that because I haven't actually had any from a reputable seller, but this seems to be a pretty good price, I think. And there's how it goes on the printer. Um, the two different sizes of connector, the smaller connector threads into the extruder, which is basically just a stepper motor um, and some pinch rollers that pushes the filament up and through that. Then the larger one goes onto the top of the hot end here. Next in, we have stainless steel clearance feeler. Okay. Ooh, looks like it's taking a bit of damage in shipping. Hopefully it's just the bag. Uh, how do we get this out of here? Okay, it is a feeler gauge set with oil on it to prevent corrosion, which I guess you would expect. Although, theoretically, these are supposed to be made out of stainless steel normally. So, that shouldn't be a big issue, but whatever. Anyways, what it is, is some uh, precision thickness pieces of metal for allowing you to set precision gaps between things. In my case, again, I'm thinking 3D printing. 
uh, when you're setting the print head distance from the bed, AKA leveling the bed, uh, you want to get it nice and consistent. Now the standard way that almost everybody does it is with a piece of paper just to get it the same distance at all four corners of the bed to level it out. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just thought it might be fun to try and add a little bit more precision and see if I can make my prints a little bit better. So this set is a metric set. It goes from one millimeter all the way down to 0 0.02 millimeters, um, which is you know, paper thin. But I think I, I don't think I'll be using that guy for very much. Great metric fewer gauge gap filler thickness measurement tool, 17 blades from best wishing. Current price is $4.45 Canadian. Back when I bought it, it was going for $3.90 Canadian. And woohoo, free shipping. Ah, so it's carbon steel, not stainless steel. Okay, that's why the oil on it. Fine. Blade length, they say it's four, four inches, 10 centimeters. It's a metric set. Why are they even quoting it in inches? Um, regardless, there are the thicknesses from 0.02 millimeters all the way up to one millimeter just for reference, for those of you who aren't into 3D printing, there's the difference between a printer that's not all that well adjusted, this gray one here, and one that is pretty well adjusted. Notice the thickness, the uh, misalignment of some of the layers there. That's the difference that, that uh, careful adjustments can make. So it is worth it. And if this helps me go a little bit further beyond this quality, I'll take it. Next thing in is a trimmer potentiometer, it says. Hmm. I have to sharpen my scalpel again. Maybe I'll have to go to using weird and inappropriate uh, things like some of these other people do. So this does have some trimmer potentiometers in it. And it says 104 there, so 100K. I think I ordered these when I was... Uh, Tinkering with putting adjustments on my uh, my model railroad um, uh, turnout or switch controller. Um, I figured if I was going to have a bunch of them on the same board, then having all of those uh, potentiometers in parallel across the power bus, I probably should have a fairly high resistance just so I don't load it down too much. 10 pieces, 3296W-104. 100k trimmer pot uh, potentiometer etc etc from oh wow that just rolls off the tongue doesn't it kj no kfjcxd336 oh, relatively new seller less than 100 feedbacks okay um, anyway so these cost two dollars and 29 cents with free shipping and there's not much to say about them they're just potentiometers what else is in this box looks like some kind of a power supply yeah, that's very power supply like. Uh, four diodes, a couple of transistory devices, inductor, possibly transformer or a bigger inductor, a couple of capacitors. On the back, we have a minus 12 volts and a plus 12 volts labeled, and we have some pads labeled A, B, C, D, and then one, two, three, four, five, huh? So that is a transformer with six, uh, primary and secondary are both center tapped by the looks of it. I'm not sure what else is going on on here. I'd have to trace it out. But with these four diodes, I would expect them to be arranged as a bridge rectifier. What are you? Probably a capacitor, 223, 1 kV, which is a little excessive. And on this side, 0.1 microfarads, 275 VAC. What kind of a power supply is that? It's not a switching power supply, obviously. And this guy from the same seller, 12 volt to 220 volt step up power module, 40 watt DC AC boost inverter module power regulator. Huh. I'll have to tinker with that in the future. I guess that explains why the two capacitors have higher voltages on them convert dc of 8 to 13 volts battery into 220 volts ac 
Okay, and if you go across different uh, points on the output circuit, you can get different uh, current readings. That should be interesting to play with, though, and potentially a little bit dangerous, which is always exciting. And now we get into the uh, ones that were sent to me for review from Banggood. Let's see what we got in here. It's a kit. Okay. I know the, they said we were sending me a few things. Um, so this, I believe, is a weather station kit. So we've got some DuPont cables. We've got a little TFT or LCD or something like that. There is a BMP, what does it say? BMP 180 or 18C. That I think is a barometric pressure uh, sensor. We have an ESP8266 based board. Yeah, okay, just a basic uh, Lowland Node MCU. I'm pretty sure I've already got one of those around. It's got the CH340 on it as well to make for easier uh, connections. That's good. It's a little bit larger form factor than the D1 Minis. But I think it also breaks out some more pins, which is nice. There is two little breadboards in this kit. Um, what else we got here? We have a USB cable. Always use another one of those around. That looks an awful lot like a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. I would be shocked if that wasn't what that was. And then what is in here? A GY30 light intensity sensor. Okay, I have not played with one of those in the past. So that's something new. So all of this, they sell as a weather station kit. Um, but of course, you could use it just as a bunch of modules too. We'll have to see what I decide to do with it. Maybe I will build it up the way it's intended initially anyway, uh, before absorbing it into stock. It's always handy having some more of those. But it's obviously more of an experimental kit rather than something you'd actually deploy just because breadboards, right? Hmm, will those fit on the breadboard? Yeah, it will, okay. So that'll bridge across two breadboards because these things normally aren't breadboard friendly. They don't really fit on like that, right? But that's kind of nice, okay. Let's uh, go and check out the listing page for that on Banggood. ESP8266 weather station kit with temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, light sensor. 0.96 display for Arduino IDE IoT starter. Currently selling at the discounted price of $19.59 Canadian with 566 shipping. However, they have promised me that they will be sending me a discount code which I will put in the link down in the descriptions if you're interested in this. As we can see over here, there's everything that was included in the kit that I got. And it looks like there is some uh, uh, build guide and some other software stuff. So let's take a look. There is a manual there. Is it really? I don't think it is only for Windows. It said that there is a download link. I'll have to get that or find that. Yeah, nothing that anybody who has uh, played with Arduino would be unfamiliar with there. Except for Open Weather Map and ThingSpeak. I'll have to figure that out, I guess, to use it the way it's intended. Optionally, I'm sure we could put together some software relatively easily, even a non-software person like me that could read most of these sensors and display them on a web page or just on the uh, little screen there. And the other package that Banggood sent for review. Again, I'll probably show these things in a separate video just on their own at some point. Uh, but for now, let's just unbox and see what's in here. Oh, yeah. I remember them talking about this too. This is a Wow stick precision screwdriver, wow stick 1F specifically, 69 in one. I'll just pause for the, for you guys to stop laughing. So on the back of the box, it calls itself a lithium precision screwdriver. Okay, not too much more information there. Let's just open it up. Okay, this box says, I'm a screw pad. Um, 
Okay, what is that? Just a work surface? Maybe? Yeah, it's just a work surface. Is it magnetic? It is vaguely magnetic. I mean, it's not super magnetic, but enough to hold that. Okay, and it's got a little grid on it. Next, oh, everything else is all nicely labeled and packed in there. Wow, some industrial design going on. I'm a toolbox. I'm a base. I am a bits group with X1. I am a dual power screwdriver and I am a case. Where should we start? Well, let's see what happens when we pull in this tab. Pulls out the case. Fine. Let's no. Okay, let's not look at the case. Let's look at... Oh, there's something down underneath there. Ooh. Three sets of bits. Okay. And there's the actual screwdriver. Let's pull it out first. Let's get right to the main event. So there is the wow stick screwdriver itself. We have a USB charging port on the back end here. A little switch. We have a place for bits to go in on that end when you turn it there's a little bit of movement but then you push the button and it spins clockwise and counterclockwise and lights up your work hmm not too horribly loud okay set that guy down i think i'm also going to just charge him up some more while we're talking here and there's a little charging LED. Okay, so we have bits group X1, X2, and X3. That's a lot of bits. I guess that's what makes up the 69 pieces. So is that screw pad. Now let's start with these in order. The first one has Phillips from 4 aught all the way up to number 2. We have slotted from 10 up to... 40. We have hex 0.7 up to 30 in that kit. Number two has hex 40 Torx T2 up to T20. Uh, P24 and there are two, five, and six pentalobe, aka star. We have Y 0.61, two, two and a half, and three. And then in the third one, we have S, or what Canadians properly call Robertson, from size 0 up to 2. We have triangular bit from 2 up to 3. And then these U, which is a different kind of security. You sometimes see those on light switches and things, I think, in like public washrooms and whatnot. Um, what is that? Point eight, 0 0.8. I think that's just a, a little poking stick. And then these other ones, which I'm not entirely familiar with. Hex 2.0, yes. Slot 2.0. Phillips, a couple more Phillipses, and a W 1.5. I don't know what that W is. Anyways, that is a lot of screwdriver bits. I pull out of the tubes on this interesting little carousel -y thing. Ah, that's why there's these extra Phillips and straights. They're longer, longer shaft. Okay, that's different. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, that would be that W1.5. Is that got a little nubbin on the front? So it is a security drive of some sort. Let me just take a quick peek at these torques as well. So I think, yeah, some of these torques are the security torques as well. Not all of them. I don't think the smallest ones are. That would be impractical, yeah. But the larger ones. So what else is in the box? We have the I'm a base and we have the I'm a toolbox accessories. Uh, let's see what the base is first. It's got some weight to it, that's for sure. Yeah, it's just a heavy little chunky base. Let's sit in there. Which way up does it want to sit? Yeah, I guess like that. Let's see what's in the accessories box. We have a magnetized, demagnetized little tool. Okay. You have a little guitar pick kind of thing for prying. 
with a suction cup. Ah, these two guys tend to show up in uh, phone repair kits to pry. It's essentially a little three-cornered spudger and that to pull the glass off, the glass front off the phones when you're removing the front glass, the digitizer glass. Then it comes with its own little charging cord. It's the wee baby one. All handy dandy and a little glass vial full of some small screws. That magnetic screw pad does a good job on holding those guys in place. I don't know why I have those because I haven't read the manual yet, but looks like three each of uh, three or four each of uh, a few different sizes. All right, and a case. Almost forgot about the case. Silica gel, okay, I shall not eat that. Ooh, slick. Not hinged together, just magneted together. So that case will hold that guy and I think, I guess, one of these sleeves of bits if you want to go on the road. Wow, stick, 1F plus 64-in-1 electric screwdriver cordless lithium ion charge LED power screwdriver. Currently selling for $51.11 because it's on sale. Although, as I said earlier, I, I'm supposed to be getting a discount code for this, which will be down in the description of the video. Hmm. Auto self-locking ratchet wheel orientation, dual torque, 0.15 newton meters or 3 newton meters. Speed, 200 RPMs, 40 minute charge time. Oh, it can run for eight hours continuously, they say. That's interesting. Three LED lights, that could be very handy. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. And quite the haul it is too. Uh, quick go over the shipping times. These potentiometers took 20 days to get here. This Bowden tube stuff also took 20 days to get here. The fever gauge took 30 days. Uh, that was with these, so that's the same 20 days. The stuff from Banggood only took about 14 days to get here because it was shipped from that same uh, reshipping warehouse in Mississauga. So it seems like they've got drop shipping warehouses in various different places, even though they're selling them from uh, from Shenzhen. They're, uh, they're drop shipping them to various countries, so it should be relatively quick to get them. Thanks, everybody, for watching. As usual, I do appreciate it. Uh, thanks to Banggood for sending me these things to play with. Oh wait, where did that kit go? Yeah, that kit as well. Um, that kit's going to show up uh, in the relatively near future when I uh, put it together and play with it. Um, upgrades from my my 3D printer and my 3D printing methodology. That should be an interesting little uh, inverter to play with as well. Again, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks, as always, to my Patreon supporters for for helping support the channel and helping me uh, keep the mailbags rolling in. I do appreciate that. Links for all of these things are down in the description, as always. Um, somebody pointed out that uh, the eBay links look a little bit weird. That's because I'm using eBay's own link shortener, so it uses an eBay.us, but the links will all go to eBay Canada because that's who I use and that's uh, where I've gone through those eBay links are all going to be affiliate links because, you know, this is the just the modern century. If you don't want to use affiliate link, don't worry. Just copy and paste the description and search for that. You'll find it. Um, discount code links for the Banggood stuff should also be down there, assuming that I receive them in time to release this video, and I hope I do. Okay, that's everything for now. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.